Hey. Thank you all. So, as this part of the slide says, my name is Steve, and as this part says, I'm a little bit of a geek. If we're all in the right room, I'm going to be talking about Pi Mania and what it is and how I did it. So, I'm going to go through a little bit, it's just background things on Alexa, the game itself, the original game, and the process of working with voice only. Just because there's no screen, all of a sudden, lots of things change that you might not necessarily realize. So you don't have to go through the same misery I went through. Start off, as we do with all talks, about who the speaker is and why they're on the stage, or as I prefer to call it, the ego slide where I brag a lot. Uh, the long and short of it is, as I'm a developer, I build stuff, I code things. That's all I'm actually any good at. Um, I've done games for 20-something years, big games, small games, all this sort of stuff. The thing that you'll notice on here is it doesn't say expert in speech synthesis. It doesn't say expert in speech recognition. That's because I'm not. I know absolutely nothing about how speech recognition works. I know nothing about speech synthesis. So, to present my talk on speech recognition and synthesis, it's going to be a fun one. So, to do this, we use Alexa. Most of you have probably come across one. Most of you probably have one spying in your homes right now. It's a simple little smart speaker. It doesn't do very much, um, but it doesn't have a, a display. There are versions of Alexa that do have displays, but you've got to work with the base model, which is this one, without. So, all of a sudden, no display at all means, well, what are you going to do? You've got to think about that bit. And most of the time, it's like, well, how do I get things into Alexa? Well, luckily, Alexa does all the hard work for you. You give Alexa a file that describes the things that you wanted to listen for. When the person says those things, it calls your program, and your program sends back the text that you want Alexa to say. Simple enough. Pymania, a uh, game from 1982 by a guy called Mel Croucher. Has anyone heard of Mel Croucher? Has anyone played the original game, Pi Mania? Bear in mind, this was 1982, so you are going to be admitting to being old if you say yes. Yeah, so Mel Croucher is a very interesting gentleman that comes up with very interesting games. Um, they are slightly weird, as you'll see shortly. So I thought, I, I knew the person, and still do know the person, who has the IP rights to Pi Mania. I was playing with Alexa, seeing what it could do, and I thought, I wonder if the person with the rights would let me have the game rights to try an experiment, which is essentially what this is, and it's an experiment to see if it's possible to take an old adventure game, which, yes, was written in BASIC, and see if it can be converted to a voice medium. Uh, so I played through the game, I looked at the source code, it's written in BASIC so I could see what it was supposed to be doing, and I read the book. Mel Crouch wrote a book uh, with Robin Evans after the, the prize had been won, and it explains the, each step of the game. This is like one of the very first forms of playthrough. Uh, this one you had to buy from a store. You know when you go into the door of a physical building and you take a book off a shelf? Yeah, one of those things. He wrote this book, and this is now available. Um, so I got a copy of that, I read through it, and I said, oh right, so this is how the game works. But on playing the game, I realized that first thing, it's a very unfair game. Um, and if you've met Mel, you'll know why it's a very unfair game. His thinking is completely out it's out of the ballpark. It's, it's brilliant. So this is the, first, this is the very first uh, part of the game on the ZX81. A key turns the lock, and you have a cursor. And you have to type something to go on to the next part of the game. What do you think you have to type in? There's no clues. There's nothing on there that gives you a clue. Now, I said this was on the ZX81, and I said it was on the ZX81 for a reason. That's the keyboard of the ZX81. Do you know what you have to type in now? Have a look at the M key. I'll zoom in on it. That's the M key. Every key on that computer would do four different things. One of those things is the symbol pi. So by pressing shift, return, shift, M, you get the character pi, which you then type into here and press return, and then you can start playing the game. Mel, if you're watching, I do still love you, but seriously, dude, not a cool game. So I thought, I know what I'm going to do with this puzzle. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not starting any game with that. But this gives you a clue as to the type of game it was. You didn't have directions such as north and south. You directed yourself by the clock face. If you wanted to go north, you'd type 12. 
go that way, it's one, two, three, and so on. Which is, as you see, it's very surreal. And I thought, I'm going to keep the surrealism in. And because it's a voice game, I think it's going to work. So I then went through the code, as you do, looking to see how it worked. But I couldn't be bothered. I'd, <sighs> too much effort. So I ended up, as I said, starting with the book, which dis dissected the whole solution step by step. I could say, OK, I will rebuild the game in Alexa using the book as the guide rather than the actual game. Also gave me lots of interesting extended universe ideas of things I could take that weren't in the game but were part of the whole ethos. So if you don't want to know the result, look away now. It's OK. I know no one's going to download it anyway, so I can do the spoilers. So in order to win this game, you have to collect items for one part of the world and give them to the pie man in another part of the world. He then gives you something in return. You take that item to another part of the world and drop it in a pile. And when you've dropped, what's it, seven items into that location, the game is over and you've won. That's it. There's nothing there, really. You know, if you remember the adventure games from the very early days, the very text adventure where you only had a verb and a noun and nothing else, you're old enough to remember those, right? You're still playing them, aren't you? Good. There's almost nothing to the game. Verb, noun, verb, noun. Move, move 12, move 3, pick up, give to pie man, drop. That's everything in the game. There's almost nothing interesting about that game mechanic. But it's voice. You have to think of everything in your head. So what the game actually is about is you creating this world in your head and visualizing how the game and how the game world fits together. And that's what I figured the game is actually going to be about. So the fun of working with voice. The way I'm going to go through this is a very specific Alexa type of thing, but it's probably true in most voice systems. So you have to specify an intent to the Alexa system. So get lamp or get an item, for example, the intent is I wish to get something. And you say, whenever they want to, when they say get, it calls one piece of code that does the get action. You then have to specify the different ways in which you can say get. Get the lamp, take the lamp, pick up the lamp, pick up the lamp, pick up an axe, pick up a axe. Every variation of get up, pick, take has to be put in one little section. And Alexa will do that for you automatically. You also have a system called slots. So you don't have to say get lamp, get box, get axe. You can say get item and then give a list of items. And Alexa will just go through every combination and then give you back one call that says, OK, game, the player has got the box. Do what you will. That's quite a lot of things. As an example, this is the get intent for picking up stuff. And as you can see at the bottom, there were 13 different ways that I could think of to say get an item. Even things like take a and take an has to be, have to be included explicitly. Because Alexa might miss here a and an, or someone might not be grammatically correct, and they might say, get a axe. We know that's wrong, but the human that's speaking might not, or Alexa might mishear it. So you have to include it. If you don't include this in the list, Alexa will not respond at all. So there's also the, the items. That's in the slots. So cuddly toy. I'd like everyone to think of a cuddly toy. You're thinking of a teddy bear, right? Suck on that, Devon Brown. That's how you do mind reading. Pretty much everyone, when you say cuddly toy, you're going to think of a teddy bear. Now, this is normally fine. If you're doing a game where it's text on a screen, you can print up the word cuddly toy. And when you type get cuddly toy, you'll probably type get cuddly toy. But if the cuddly toy exists only in your mind, when you come to say, oh, I want to drop the cuddly toy now, if you're thinking of that as a teddy bear, you're probably going to say drop teddy bear or drop bear, or drop cuddly bear. So you have to have a whole bunch of synonyms for every possible way that the person might misinterpret what they heard earlier. So again, lots more typing, lots more thought, which is a shame because I don't like thinking. So the game, as we said, is it's fairly simple. These are pretty much every verb in the system. Look, inventory, get, drop, use, give. The directions, which I said, are a clock face. So I've got the numbers 1 to 12. And the help system, which is very, very useful with voice. Because you've got no instruction sheet. 
If you're going to say, right, what, what do I do next in the game? There's, no th there's nothing on the screen that might suggest the word get would be a good thing to say here. So you've got to give them audio clues to say, well, try saying this. So the short version is Alexa handles everything, which is really, really good and absolutely awful. So Alexa does get rid of the ums and the ahs and the odd noises in the background. It will work out, you know, they said get a, an axe, and it will work out, well, I'm not going to give you all that information. I'm just going to say get an axe. It will unify everything, so you've only got to deal with one case. That's great. That's simple. But as a downside, it does everything for you. So there is no freeform item. So if you're having a game and you've managed to get a passcode for a door, one, two, three, four. If you wanted to say, use the passcode one, two, three, four, you can't do it. You can't have, use the passcode and then an empty gap. You have to say to Alexa, I want you to listen for get the passcode one, two, three, four and get the passcode 1235, and get the passcode 1236, and, and so on for all 10,000 possibilities. Which is slightly time consuming. But it also means that your game design will end up changing as you suddenly start building with the technology, and you suddenly realize it can't do the puzzle you wanted to do. Uh, data sets, as we've seen, will grow. This game has a tin of baked beans in it, and why not? But you have to then think of every variation of baked beans. Uh, words, uh, homophones, it's, it has no chance of that. Alexa gets that wrong, because it has no idea of context. So you have to handle that, and you have to give it more words. And this comes back to what you were saying in your talk. It's about spoken text, not written text. So you have to say everything out loud, and then shut your brain off and say, does what I say sound right? Could that be misconstrued? So simple words like C, is that C sure? Is that C the programming language? What? So you have to do all of this work ahead of time. Um, there's no visual clues. So hang glider, for example. It's not hand glider, it's hang glider. But if you just hear that and you don't know that it's hang glider, you may well say hand glider back to the system. So you've got to realize that someone could say that. And you've got to put that back. Uh, indeterminate game state. Now, this is a weird one. When the, when the machine has finished speaking, it's, yeah, exactly. There's nothing going on. You've got to hold everything in your head at this point. There's nothing you can just quickly check back on screen. There's nothing you can go and do. It's just dead air. So you're not really sure what the game state is because you can't, pardon the pun, you can't see it. You've got to hold it. Uh, you've got to guide the players, as we said, to what they should be saying next. And you should try and repeat things back to the player. Uh, that way they remember it. So when you pick up an item, for example, it says, you have picked up the box. Something happens, you now have a box. It's another way of getting the player to remember what the whole game state is, particularly when the game is almost nothing but picking up items, going somewhere else, dropping items, going somewhere else, giving items to the pie man. So that's the way we get all the audio into the system. What about on the other end, how, how do we get it to speak? Well, that luckily is um, not my problem. Because Alexa, well, you know, you give a piece of text and it will speak to you, which is great. Uh, so I just picked three voices because Alexa is pretty awful at this stuff. It's great that you can construct a sentence with lots of little bits. And it's great that Alexa will actually read it out fairly well. But trying to distinguish between more than three voices can become a little bit tiresome because of it's Alexa. So I stuck to those three, and then I rewrote all the text so that those particular voices would actually sound correct. And for that, I look, I've got some code in the slide. Um, and, th and this is what I did. I wrote a little library for myself, and I said, switch into this voice, say that. Switch into this voice, say this. And I, I have three, as I say, I have three voices. So I've got the pie man, I've got that of the guide, and I've got just a general um, voice, which is, you are now here. This is what's going on. Because the guide is kind of your halfway. The pie man is such an esoteric character that it's difficult to relate. So I have a guide voice as well in there. So that it gives you your entry point to that character. It's like the assistants in Doctor Who, that sort of thing. Um, but to generating the output is quite easy. You, gener you can generate the text. So you can say, you have picked up the box. And you can generate that text dynamically, which is great. But that's not quite 
the whole story. Is it an or a? You have picked up a box. Yeah, fine. You have picked up an axe, which means you need to put more stuff in your logic to say, is this particular noun an a or an an word? Uh, you've got to check for plurals. If you've ever seen an application that says, you know, you have one emails, or something like that, you think, come on, it's one extra line of code to fix that grammar. When it's a dynamic game, you've got to do it all the time. And when, when you're reading it from a screen, you probably don't read it. If, if, you, if you see a line that says, you have three coins in your backpack, you probably do not read the words, you have and in your backpack. You just see the numeral. That's the only bit you're interested in. So you just skip right through to that piece of text and you read it. With the voice, you have to wait to the end of the voice. You have to listen to it all. You can't stop it. Uh, plurals, as uh, I've said, character pronouns, you've got to put those in. Uh, homophones as well, and spelling out numbers. So the, the Chicago Manual of Style suggests that you spell out some numbers as 1, 2, 3, and other numbers you read out as 123. So you've got to code all these rules in, which is tiresome. But it's OK. It's all done now. And if you're interested more on this stuff, the secret uh, password for Google is SSML, uh, speech synthesis markup language. So in the same way that you can put italics and bold around other sorts of text, you can say, whisper this text to Alexa. And it works quite well. I'm not an actor, so I'm not going to attempt this. But in August, an august patriarch was reading an ad in Reading, Massachusetts. Long-suffering Job secured a job to polish piles of Polish brass. You have to mark up every single word in that, including things like, oh, this is an abbreviation. You need to work out what it is. The same thing again. You're writing for verbal, for speech. You're not writing for the screen. Because this, I can read, but the computer won't. Loads of words, you know, like bass and bass. You have to put in little things that says, this is the way to pronounce this word. Uh, lots of technical problems that come up, mostly due to Amazon. Um, they require you to have two words to invocate the, invoca uh, the uh, Alexa skill, which means if your game is one word, like Pi Mania, you have to write it as two words, or they don't let you on. Um, they don't like games that have the word kissing in them, because that's far too sexual for Amazon for some reason. I don't know why either. Um, they also have a, because it's the walled garden, they want people to go to Alexa and think, this is great, I can ask for help. The problem is, this is a game. You're asking for help in a game where the character is a bit of a nutter. And the actual response, if you ask the character for help, the character will say, help yourself. That's a legitimate response in the character. Alexa looks at it and go, this is not very helpful. When the player asks for help, you should suggest, why don't you say this? Which I thought was a whole load of fooey. So what I did, I went back to my game. I put a variable in it which says, in review. When I submit it to Amazon, I set that to true. Amazon check it. They think, that's good, and they release it. And then I change it to false. Uh, this is some really boring dev stuff which I didn't go into. But there is one important thing here, debugging. Debugging a game, which is voice, is really, it really throat. If you're having to spend hours and hours every day just talking to this machine to get through the game, that, that takes a toll on you. And it also means your voice gets a little bit slack as it goes on through the day. You go, just go get the box, drop the box, so it starts not understanding you. Um, and I built a code harness, which I'm not going to go into because it's far too dull with lots of program stuff, like this, which means I can actually write myself a small script that plays the entire game as if it were the voice. Which is brilliant. It's the only game I've ever written which has 100% test coverage, and I know every single code path works. So the kind of benefits from doing this Alexa stuff is people come to it thinking, oh, it's a voice-only game. And they also come to it with Pi Mania, which is, oh, it's only a simple text adventure. But that means you can then play with their expectations. Pi Mania was meant to be this very otherworldly place. So you can do things with that. Um, now, as well as being able to play the voice, you can play sounds. So you can give it an arbitrary sound, which gives you more scope. So here are some sounds and some examples of things in use. This looks like a dead end. Grab what you can and run. Within easy reach, you can see a pork pie. 
Okay, get pork pie or get the pork pie. You now have a pork pie. Repeating the things. Pie, man. This and is parting of the ways. Follow three, seven, eight, or eleven. Hello. Oops. There we go. That's, that's, the, that's the other voice. Uh, the other voice that I was mentioning. Ways. Follow three, seven, eight, or eleven. Hello, stranger. I'm the pie man, and I'm starving. Give me food, or else. Within easy reach, you can see nothing. Sounds so threatening in that voice, doesn't it? Porky pie. What? This is parting of the ways. Follow three. Bad to worse. What a scab-infested odorous pit. Escape at twelve, four, nine, or five. Yawn. I'm the pie man, and I am bored. I bet you've got something to give me. That bit, that yawn Within is also easy reach, you can see nothing. Because of the surrealness, I was able to say, well, instead of getting a yawn sound effect, I will actually get them to say the word, yawn. Seen one of these? It's oxygen. Yeah, because why not add a piece of music in the middle of your game? They're expecting voice, and they get that. What a scab-infested odorous pit. Yes, we know. You can crawl along the rancid sewage pipe that veers off at eight, or carry on regardless. Within easy reach, you can see nothing. Okay, uh, go north. Please speak louder, Tim, or saved. Nope. Next time, simply please speak louder, Tim, or saved. Please speak louder. Now, Alexa doesn't worry about the volume. It's got 20 little microphones in there. But every now and again, I'll just say, please speak louder. And they have to go, I want to go. <laughs> and also got a thing that goes, speak softer as well. Um, what else? Oh. Bad to worse. What a scab-infested, odorous pit. Escape at... 12, 4, 9, or 5. Yawn. Yeah, it's, it's in there, and it tr gets triggered randomly when they're in a particular location, they've got particular things, and the is Amazon reviewing this flag is set off. <laughs> there's a whole stack of those things. Um, yeah, there's a fart in there as well. It'll whisper, it'll start insulting you. Uh, every now and again, it'll pretend it's crashed, and it'll say there was a problem with the requested skills response. Just kidding, you can go north. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, it fits with the thing of the game, and you can do it. So I did. Uh, so in effect, adding a text adventure to Alexa is comparatively easy, because the parser is something that you don't have to do. Alexa is doing that for you. You just have to write very long lists of words that cover every eventuality. There is a low risk of rejection, so the way to do it is to write an Alexa app that does nothing. Just say, oh, hello, I'm a, I'm a Pie Man game you know, will be coming soon, Alexa, uh, Amazon will approve it, and then later you change all the code underneath, they don't notice, and you can get away with everything. Uh, if anyone from Amazon is watching, go away. Uh, and it is an existing franchise, and it's a very niche thing, so I'm fully aware that it's a niche product on a niche platform using a niche IP, so I'm, I'm figuring there will be three fans of this game, but they will be absolute mega fans. So it's not really about immersion. You can't get really involved in a game where you can you know, do something else while you're talking to it. But it's accessibility. At any point, you can go, oh, I can do something here. I can just talk to it while I'm fiddling with something else. I would probably look to use voice actors more, as we say. Alexa's pretty awful at that, but it's cheap, so, you know. Go, go where we can, and the design implementation must be done together because you might have a fantastic puzzle that you then realize Alexa cannot physically do because the system doesn't work. So I know I'm out of time, I can, but um, if you want to have a look at it, it's there. If you don't, it doesn't matter. I shall be around to... Uh... This is the problem. You can't monetize this stuff. So there's no money to be made here. It's just a case of, this is an idea. Is Adventure Games with a voice-only thing a good idea? And I'm hoping, by the fact I've got people in this room, that it is a good idea. So I'll leave it at that, say thank you very much, and I can answer questions later.